In this episode, in this inaugural episode of Frank Weber's Party, welcome to the party, by the way, I'm going to give you an overview of this new podcast, what the show is about and who's it for, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself and why I am doing this podcast. And I'm also going to go over a lot of segments I plan to include on the show. I'm planning for it to be a really special show, much like a party, or at least as close to a party as I can get in an audio podcast like this. So stay tuned. I think you're really going to enjoy this. The inaugural edition of Frank Weber's Party. Glad that you're with me today. I'm your host, Frank Weber, and I'm really excited to be doing this new podcast for you. Today, I'm going to give you a little bit of an introduction as to what I'm going to be doing in this new show. And I'm just so glad that you could join me. You're all invited. You're always invited. So let me go ahead and give you a little overview here to start. This show is called Frank Weber's Party because it's ultimately going to be a mix of interviews and other fun segments. It's going to be just as if you were at a party now, but I won't be able to provide booze or food for you. Probably won't be able to directly meet any of the other folks we bring on on your own or take somebody to go home with. But this podcast is going to be about as close as you can get, like a a social party or any kind of a get-together. And as you know, there are lots of different types of parties. You have your birthday parties and graduation parties and wedding receptions, cocktail parties. They're all a little different. Some people prefer some of them over others, and no two in the same genre are going to be alike. If you go to a wedding reception this weekend and go to another the following weekend, they're obviously going to be quite a bit different. But I'm going to have a lot of different shows for you here. No show is going to be alike. And so I think if you like parties, any of those that I listed, you're going to really like the show. And when you're at a party, you often can meet new and interesting people, as well as catch up with old friends. And that's going to be the interview part of the show. And we're going to try to have as many interviews for you as possible. And then, of course, on top of that, there's going to be other activities as well, such as party games, such as 20 Questions, of course, is the old uh, common version, various types of storytelling, maybe even watching TV shows and movies, discussing those, those types of things. But again, if you like parties, you'll like the show. Now, a little bit about myself. My name is Frank Weber. I'm a retired dentist of 17 years. Officially, that goes back to the day I graduated in 2006, but it was really a bit longer than that in the profession overall. I live here in Canyon, Texas, here in the Texas Panhandle, a great little town to live in. Been here 12 years with my wife. We've also been married 12 years, and we have a little dog, and I just love life here in the Texas Panhandle. And I really love the concept of podcasting. When I was growing up, and even before podcasts were around and available, you could listen to talk radio or the old AM radio. And when they weren't playing music or news, they would have talk shows on the radio, and I was always interested in hearing those various opinions and just being very intrigued by it. And I always imagined myself as hosting something like that one day. I always wanted it to be fun and maybe even a little comedic. And since this is obviously a party and it's supposed to be fun, then obviously I want it to be fun and entertaining and potentially even comedic, which would be great. Now, since I want to make it fun, I don't really particularly want to make it too deep. I don't really want to talk too much about social or political issues on the show. But there's always a chance they may come up during the course of the podcast. Nevertheless, we'll try to make it lighthearted and fun and much like a party because this is my party, and you're invited, right? The interviews, as well as some of the stories I may share with you every now and then, 
I've always been intrigued by stories and storytelling that other people have to tell. People are very complex and complicated. I often wonder what makes them tick. But they always have interesting stories, and I think one of the big deals is that if they tell you their stories, whether it's funny or dramatic or whatever, you'll really find out that they're not too different than you are. You get a little peek into their world. You get to know them a little bit. And I think we all have times when we go through life where we wonder if other people are feeling the same things that we are at some particular time. Are they going through the same struggles or do they enjoy the same things? You may even ask yourself, wow, am I cursed or am I blessed? Is this person cursed or blessed? They feel the same thing or not feeling the same thing? We always wonder about that. And you always wonder if you're on the same page with them. Are they like me at all? Are they not like me at all? We can't get into their heads and read their minds, but we can hear their stories. And then we can tell that a lot of times they're really not all that different. And we can use that to say, well, do I like this person or do I not, do I not like this person? And a lot of this is also, too, about relationships and building them, both in terms of being able to do these interviews and hear the stories, both with you as the listeners and with the guests that we bring on here for your listening enjoyment. I think over the years in my life, I'm 45 years old now, uh, a lot of people, they seem to like me. They seem to think that I'm funny. But the confusing thing to me was always in a career of 17 years or more than 17 years, they often didn't want to see me because they didn't want to go to the dentist, which is totally understandable. They didn't want people working in their mouths or they were anxious or sometimes in dentistry, we would see people who didn't really value our service. I mean, even in the case of emergencies, but here on this show, if I can parlay that likability and the fact that many people think I'm funny, then this should be a really, really good show something you're going to want to show up for every week. And I'm really right now hoping to do this every week, at least once a week, hopefully for as much as an hour and a half. Although I'll probably do a little bit of flexibility here and there, which we'll talk about in a little bit. There may be times when it's just an hour or maybe even less than that. And I think it's really popular. We may wind up doing more days a week. I'd really love to see that happen. Let me go into some of the segments here that I'm going to talk about. I told you already, of course, we're going to do an interview segment. We would like to have at least one guest on a week, maybe even two or maybe a group at some times. They could be from all walks of life. They may be someone local here in Canyon. could be somewhere elsewhere in Texas or the USA or around the world for that matter. Or, Or maybe somebody who's not even really in the public eye. I like to focus on that. And then I would really like to occasionally bring on a celebrity or someone who's fairly well-known. For me personally, I may bring on some people who I don't particularly know well that may have a podcast or a book or perhaps a show or a movie or whatever that they're promoting. And I'll come on and talk to them about it. And, And of course, on occasion, there may be some other guests that I know better personally. May even on occasion bring a family member or a friend on, perhaps. And I hope that the interview segment, or at least the storytelling segment as well, is going to be the main bread and butter of the show. But I'm also adding some other segments, some other things that are going to be really fun, kind of party activities, party favors even. Occasionally I'll personally bring a story to you from my real life. It may be something in the past, or it could be an observation or occurrence that has occurred in my life not all that long ago. And I'll try to explain it, talk to you about it, perhaps entertain you with it. It'll be kind of like we're telling stories at a party, essentially. It'll just be you and me on the show, even if the guest is perhaps not available or not on that day. I'm also going to try to do what I call an Ask Me Anything segment likely going to do that through my Twitter handle that I'll put up on the show notes at the end. It could take three to five episodes or maybe even more before we actually start doing that. This obviously requires your audience participation and I'll try to read as many of your questions on the air as I can, 
But if not, I'll respond to you on Twitter. Very interested in what you would ask me. I'm really open to pretty much anything. But like I said, since this is a party here and we try to have everybody have a good time, I would ask you to keep it lighthearted and fun. But certainly you can ask me pretty much whatever you want to, even including some intimate things and whatnot. And hopefully we'll have some interesting and fun answers. And I'll try to be open and real about them as well. So another big segment that I'm doing, I'm a big fan of, you could say, classic TV and movies. And uh, I wanted to do like a re review segment on that. A lot of guys usually have a childhood crush on an actress or some other celebrity. I have a friend, for instance, that I play golf with, has a crush on Linda Evans. She was on the TV shows The Big Valley and Dynasty. I remember her most from Dynasty back in the 80s, and that show was basically like the show Dallas, but it was set in Denver. My particular crush is on Priscilla Barnes, who played Nurse Terry Alden on Three's Company. She was on during the last three seasons of that show, numbers 6, 7, and 8, and that lasted from 1981 to 1984 for a total of 70 episodes. And I can tell you a little bit about her real quick. I don't want to say everything in one show, of course. Obviously, the fact that she's beautiful and seems to have a great personality, great smile. She's still around today. I think she and her husband, who's actor Ted Monty, are doing an Airbnb in Glendale, California, where they live, so I'm kind of giving her a free plug on that. I'm hoping to go over there and visit sometime. As you may know, she came at a difficult time on the Three's Company show after Suzanne Somers had been fired. And during the transition, kind of went through some turmoil of her own. But despite of all that, she really helped the show continue on for three more years. And I think the general attitude toward her in Hollywood and the public is that she's kind of underrated. She's not underrated in my book, of course. I'm a huge fan of her. But she's definitely, I would say, underappreciated coming in, especially to Three's Company and doing all the things that she did for that show during that such difficult time. And I love Three's Company. I think it's a wonderful show. One of the funniest shows that was ever on TV. And I'm a huge, huge fan of comedy. And I'm going to do a segment here where I'm going to review classic and sometimes not so classic TV and movies that she was in. And the criteria is going to be pretty much anything that she was in except for Three's Company. And the reason that I do that is because uh, a lot of people on podcasts and other places where fans gather uh, have reviewed those Three's Company episodes ad nauseum, whether it was before her time on the show or during the time that she was on the show. So we're not going to be doing those, at least not right now. It's, there's always a chance we might do them later. But we will review the many, many other things that she's been on, in over the course of what is now getting close to 50 years in Hollywood. And I feel like she has such a range, too, in, in terms of what she's been in. You know, she's been in comedies. She's been in old-school detective shows from the 70s, like Rockford Files and Starsky and Hutch, and been in some made-for-TV movies, lots of different Aaron Spelling productions. Starsky and Hutch was one of them, and like The Love Boat and Hotel or a couple of others. Vegas, which we're going to mention briefly here in a second. And then there's also been a number of movies, particularly the James Bond movie License to Kill, probably her most notable one. Mall Rats was a great comedy. She had a very memorable scene in that as well, and something that I think we could have a tremendously good time with on this show. And we're going to review all those, no matter how small a role she may have played in some movies. Some of them were obviously much larger, and she was a main character. We're also going to review those movies where she may have had maybe just one line or two lines or even no lines. And this is, of course, assuming that we can find them. I can find quite a few of them in the list, but then there are some that are also very, very difficult to find. And I'll give you a little example of that here. And this is not the only example, unfortunately, a little trivia. She was on the pilot for a show in the late 80s after Three's Company called She's the Sheriff. 
And that was interesting because that was in the era when shows that started airing instead of network TV, they were airing in first run syndication. And that started to get big during that time. She shot the pilot for that show, but she wound up later leaving the show right after the pilot for reasons that we're not going to get into right now. And then Suzanne Summers ironically came in and took over for the two seasons that the show lasted. That pilot episode never aired and presumably was going to be very difficult, if not impossible, to find. But one thing that I would ask you and call on you as a listener is if you can find something of hers that may be pretty rare, I would certainly appreciate your help with that so that we could review it on this show. That would be just totally awesome. So I'm looking forward to doing all these reviews for you, and we're going to try to have a lot of fun and make a few jokes there. But anyway, I'm a huge fan of hers. <clears throat> like I said, excuse me there, beautiful, very beautiful woman, great smile, seems to have a great personality. And who knows, one day maybe we'll get to meet her and she'll be on the show. I think that would be really terrific, really wonderful. And so to dig in deep, a little bit deeper on reviewing these shows, obviously she has to be in it. Could be a minimal period of time. But we're going to have an overview of the show or the movie or whatever it is. Give you a little history about it, maybe a little trivia about it. How long was it on for? You know, what length of time? Those types of things. And then the main characters, we'll talk about them as well as who also was in this, particularly in terms of guests. Sometimes that's the most interesting part, is who else, as far as actors and actresses, actually starred in the shows. For example, in 1980, Priscilla was in an episode of Vegas, which starred the late, great Robert Urich. And then there were three other guests in that show that had, at various different times, guest starred on Three's Company. And we'll go over that much more when we get into that Vegas episode later. And that was actually a very interesting time because that episode aired in late 1980, not too long before she joined the Three's Company cast and they were already going into a transition over there. And so those kinds of factoids, as well as what's actually going on in the show, is what we're going to talk about. And then we'll do an overall review of the show, maybe even give it a grade critique. Obviously, I'm going to give a lot of love to Priscilla. Try not to critique her too difficult in terms of the acting and performance, but it should be a lot of fun. So I'm going to pay homage and tribute to her. But I also want to be able to review the show enough to where it's going to pique your interest and give you enough of a curiosity to go check it out on your own. I know that some people may not share this view, but I really think that a lot of these shows and movies from the past were actually really, really great. And I know a lot of things have changed over time. But if I can have you have a lot of fun on this show and really get your interest going in it, that would be the best thing in the world. And there will obviously be some spoiler alerts. It'll be hard to get around those. And I'll just reiterate one more time that she's been in a lot of different things, you know, lots of different range in her acting, such as like whether it was comedy or a horror movie or action or science fiction. Could be half-hour sitcoms or hour-long shows made for TV, movies, theater movies, you name it. So I hope that you really enjoy that. So I've never done podcasting before, and we're trying to give a little bit of variety to all our shows here. Uh, I may need to have a lot of flexibility early on. We're still trying to get some interviews going, whether it's acquaintances that I may know or, or friends. I know there's plenty of people we could talk to. would love to have them on the show. My goal is to have an interview, at least one interview, on every week. Every party is going to be a little different, but it's going to be a lot of fun. In the Ask Me Anything segment, you know, we're going to put the three episodes out first, but it could be five, six, seven episodes or whatever before we get that segment going. I would love to hear from you. Audience participation. If you showed up at a party at someone's house or at a wedding chapel or anything like that, I would certainly be welcome to take suggestions from you. And I'll put my email and Twitter and Facebook accounts on the show notes. 
I think that's mostly it for today. I'm really excited to do this. I think it's going to be a lot of great fun. would really like to do at least once a week. I'm thinking about releasing this on Fridays, probably early in the morning. But there's one more thing that I wanted to do before I call it a day on this intro podcast. Another segment that I may do is what I call movie analogy. And I'm going to give you one of those right here before we go. It doesn't involve Priscilla, and so if we do a movie analogy segment, it it may be independent from that. But one of my favorite sports dramas is The Natural with Robert Redford. And if you know anything about the movie, he started off as this great pitching prospect, young man, the next great pitching phenom. And he had an incident as a young man as he was going to tryouts and such, and that sidetracked him and caused him to not be able to play baseball for, I think it was something like 16 years. And anyway, later on, he's a much older man, comes up with the New York Knights as this big-time hitting prospect, very big power hitter with these big home runs and everything. And I guess in his mind, he's still shaken from that incident. He doesn't really want to talk about it. He doesn't like to give his manager and team owner at the time a lot of background on who he is and where he came from and whatnot. He really wanted to let his plane do the talking, and he certainly did it in that movie in that one season that he played for the Knights. But while he wanted to keep some of his past kind of hidden and nobody wants to reveal every single thing about them, he told his old girlfriend that he met up with later in the movie, played by Glenn Close, that he wanted to walk down the street and have fans say about him, there goes Roy Hobbs, the best there ever was to play in the game. And what I'm saying to you in this analogy is I'm not saying that I'm the best there ever was to be in podcasting or the best there ever will be or whatever. But being able to do this means that you can get a peek into my world and learn something about me and get to know me in the way that I would like to be known, is what I would say. And so that's why I paint that picture of The Natural, a really great movie from 1984, a number of other stars in it as well. I would certainly try to rent it and check it out whenever you get a chance. I think that's about it for today. I just wanted to do an intro show and hope you'll hit subscribe afterwards and tell your family, tell your friends. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to this and providing this content for you. And being a friend of mine, you're always invited every week. I can't thank you enough for being here. So... Anyway, that's about it for this intro show. I can't wait to see you in the next show and hear from you. And take care, everybody. The theme song is called Retro Funk by Soul Prod Music and can be found at pixabay.com.